I'm Linda Duncan, Member of Parliament for Edmonton Strathcona, and I'm here today with Anari Dave. She is a grade 11 student uh, from my riding, and she's joined here with her mother, uh, RuPaul Dave, and her sister, Sav Dave. Uh, a proud family. Um, I want to inform you of uh, a proposal calling for action on the right to safe drinking water for First Nation communities. And that comes from this student, Anari Dave. Similar to many of my New Democrat colleagues, I held a competition in my riding of Edmonton Strathcona called Create Your Canada. And it's for high school students who want to propose an important law reform at the federal level. And I received numerous proposals ranging from stricter laws regulating intoxicated drivers, interestingly, to lowering the voting age to 14. But the one particular proposal that stood out for me that was incredibly thoughtful, well-researched, well-presented, and far-sighted is the proposal that was submitted by Aneri Dave. And uh, in order to proceed, and so Aneri will shortly come forward and she's going to tell you why she was inspired to propose this law reform, but I thought it in important to practice what we preach. Um, what we believe in, in my party is that when you're coming forward with a federal law reform and if it impacts Indigenous peoples, you have to work directly with them to come forward with that proposal. And so I reached out to the regional chief, uh, Marlene Poitras in Alberta, and she recommended that I make contact in AFN with those who work in water. And fortunately, it's Caleb Ben, who I know well, who has been working on this issue, and we work very closely with him on developing this motion. Uh, the motion, M241, is on the notice paper. It's there before uh, the House now. And it is grounded in the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People, particularly Articles 18, 19, 25, and 32.2, supporting self-determination and free prior and informed consent on any matters impacting First Nation lands, resources, and peoples. And it also specifically recognizes the re resolutions recently over the past few years by the Assembly of First Nations and agreement from the chiefs in assembly um, to proceed to national engagement and advocacy for legislation affirming and ensuring that First Nation rights, interests, aspirations, inherent rights and laws, standards, guidelines and processes are protected. And the motion asked the House to call on the government to commit to the repeal of the current Safe Drinking Water Act for First Nations, Secondly, to support the co-drafting with First Nations of legislation to replace the Safe Drinking Water for First Nations Act that ensures that all First Nations are provided with systems for safe drinking water and wastewater treatment and that fully reflect the rights, needs and priorities of First Nations and finally, commit the necessary resources to actually develop and implement these measures. And so I am now going to turn to Aneri, and she is going to share what inspired her to come forward with this important reform on behalf of First Nations. Aneri. Okay, so let me just start by introducing myself. My name is Aneri Dave, and I'm a grade 11 student at WP Wagner High School. When it came time to decide exactly what I'd be submitting to the competition, the one problem that sparked a trail of thought and concern within me was the issue of the lack of safe drinking water available to our First Nations communities. Personally, I was shocked when I found out just how widespread the issue was. In fact, according to the Government of Canada website, as of April 2016, approximately 78 communities across Canada were facing long-term drinking water advisories. Um, I believe it is time that our government gives due accountability to the issue and takes the initiative to listen to these communities and hear their perspectives on how to deal with these issues. I've been privileged enough to grow up with clean water and I felt it was my duty to use this moment to bring light to an issue that had previously been overlooked in a way. Essentially, the idea came to me when we were researching the current legal situation of water during class, which eventually led to me diving deeper into the issue and uncovering a crisis that I was unaware of. Every day, young children and elders are expected to oblige to drinking water advisories, some of which have been advised over generations now. I believe that everyone has the right to accessible, clean drinking water, and being able to provide this basic need to our First Nations communities would be a step in the right direction towards effective reconciliation. Water is a need that no individual can live without, and to seek a clean drinking water crisis in a country as diverse and progressive as Canada is truly a matter that demands attention. 
The lack of access to drinkable water not only limits an entire community from reaching their full potential, but it also means that fellow students my age are having to go to extreme lengths to get the same water that I get from the turn of a tap. Personally, I feel that if I've been blessed enough to have sanitary water at my fingertips, then it is my duty as a fellow Canadian to at the very least utilize my opinion and do my part to ensure that others experience the same commodities that I do. I basically just want to see equality and not the kind that we have embedded in our minds, but the kind that demands change. And I hope to see better legislation when it revolves around a basic need as essential as water in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much, Janeri. Thank you very much. I think uh, that uh, everyone can see why I would have chosen an Aerie as the winner of this contest. An extremely thoughtful and uh, well-spoken student. I'm proud to have her as a, as a constituent, and I know that her school is extremely proud. Um, we're certainly open to questions if there are any. Yep. Oh, yes, please. Okay. Um, you said that you were you discovered it when you were in class, mm -hmm. and and. And so when you were researching it, was there anything else that concerned you? Um, it was kind of just how there was just so little action being taken that kind of motivated me to write on this. Um, but yeah, basically just that.